hello, hello, good people. It's time for an episode of Creatively Shaded, your destination for all things Bay Area theater and beyond, honey, where the dish is served and the tea is hot. So let's join our hosts, Bay Area Black artists. Elizabeth Jones. Jaquetta Farrar. Phaedra Tillery Belton. Sean J. West. Come peek behind the curtain. Good day, everyone. What up, what up, what up? What up? We're <laughs> here. You know who we are. Welcome to another episode where we get to dish, spill a little tea, and talk about all things theater Bay Area from our perspective. Yes. So let's dive on in, y'all. Oh, before we dive in, I, I must say, you notice that there are only three of us here today. Mm-hmm. Our other co-host, Jaquetta, had a loss in the family, so she was unable to be with us today. So we send thoughts, not thoughts and prayers. We send love and light to her and her family. And she's here in spirit, but uh, she's dealing with some stuff right now. So we love you. We love Come you. On. Take care. So with that, where, ooh, we Wait. went to the theater bay area. We've been busy. We've been busy. We've been real busy. And we appreciate y'all for tuning in, watching us, but one of the things that we were able to do, one of the many things we were able to do in the last couple of weeks was <laughs> attend the TVA Connect Conference. Yes. Um, there was a fall conference for creatives that happened at Z Space in San Francisco. That's right. Um, um, they had def- oh, come on, get together. There's several different classes that you could attend, mm-hmm. um, panels, um, and we all attended in one way or another. Yep. Um, well, we couldn't be there fully. Right. We could only show up in the half day because I had, because I got my nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> I had some work stuff on the weekend that I had to tend to. So yeah. I went to that at the first part of the day. Then I joined TVA. Mm-hmm. And you had rehearsal. Yeah, I had rehearsal. You know, we stayed booked and busy. And I'm busy. But Liz, Liz was there all day. Yeah. It was really exciting to be there all day. Um, what's even more exciting is the fact that we've actually partnered with TVA and we were invited to be the arts journalism component of the conference. So what that really meant is that I got to go around, I got to talk to people, take pictures, schmooze, and all of the things, and it was really, really fun. Liz loves to connect. Um, <laughs> what are the, we got to attend some panels. Sean J, yeah. what a class were you able to attend when you went to TBA? So yeah. Michael and Sullivan had a uh, little session, I, I call them breakout sessions. Yes. And it was art and activism. Art activism, because all theater is political. Yes, and so he is a, one of the, they call it a collective of the Mind Troop. Mm-hmm. And so part of the Mind Troop is to challenge what is society stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was very enlightening. He spoke about, uh, I don't want to say anything too much, but I, I got to interview him briefly. Mm-hmm. And he shared some of his experience with a local Bay Area, um, I call her a blogger. She's a reviewer, but we're being kind when we say reviewer. So that's the shitty part. And so he was able to speak about how a lot of reviewers don't know truly the theater scene here. Mm. And they have such power that they can actually end a show by yeah. something that they say. Yeah. So we need to take that power back from them right. and own our, own our own stuff. And so yeah. they say, hey, so you may read that, it ain't true, and go, go to this go show. Yeah. Really, his experience with this particular one and the Mind Troop, they kind of target the Mind Troop. Mm. And it's sort of like, mm. Interesting. So we need to make sure we are holding all of our artists and arts companies yeah. in close proximity to ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talking to each other. So yeah. Yeah, because art these theaters can get very personal and in, inside their feelings about things, and so can the people writing about them. And if you don't have certain relationships, things could could be a funny way, which is why we're here yeah. <laughs> to make folks accountable and have the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, I, was able, I was able to attend the feminist acting class, oh. which was done by Gina Young. Um, I believe she, oh, she's from LA, yeah. And so that was, I feel like I'm a feminist. Yes, you are. All the time. Yeah. Um, so I don't, no shade. I feel like it wasn't anything that I definitely learned new. But I realized as I am, I'm getting older <laughs> that some of these younger kids really don't know how to like speak up for themselves or like. Um, be in the room and have a voice like mine. I, I feel like, oh, why you gonna say just, just say what you gotta say, 
or just be who you want to be and everybody doesn't have that muscle. Right. Um, so it was interesting to watch this class and how some people were like, oh yeah, I do that. I do see that in you know audition, like the way people call out auditions where I needed a young white female that yeah. can jump rope and wear athletic gear and like all of that is like super you know inappropriate now, mm-hmm. right? Like well, it's always been inappropriate, but just the way in which that's how you choose who you want to work with because the yeah. way they put their call out. And how, and then also how people view you. Um, you don't have to go to calls of people how they view you, you how you view you. Go to rooms that um, make you feel good or that roles that you want to play, and not necessarily roles that people say that you should play. So that was a really dope um, conversation. I would say most of those type of breakout sessions either teach you something or reinforce what you already know. Exactly. Yeah. And like have information like that. Yeah. So and, and I was I was able to have a lot of conversations with people in the room. There was a happy hour afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um so I was able to stay for the happy hour. Um and congratulate some of the uh, amazing black actors that won awards yeah. um this week in at the TBA Connect. Mm-hmm. We want to shout out to um, Kimberly Ridgeway yeah. and is it Rolanda? Rolanda yeah, and won amazing awards from the TBA um, Connect Conference. So we just want to shout those out. Yes, young ladies who are on the move here in the Bay Area doing the amazing, amazing work. Amazing. Look out for them. We're gonna yeah, shout out the please. Instagram for sure. Yes, um, but Liz, what did you think? Cause you was there all day, girl. All you got day. all the juicy goods. All right, I was all day, and that's Kenny. Remember the name of the class that I went to. But it was about arts journalism. And it's interesting that you were talking about theater and and critics. And that's exactly what that panel was about. About how to be impactful, about the direction that um, theater critics are going into. And it was very interesting because we didn't know this getting into it, but we are arts journalists as well. Mm unintentionally, but that's what we are because we're highlighting and we're um, bringing awareness to uh, theater and the community and the artists and every single person who's involved. So that was really powerful. And then the second one I went to and uh, was about intimacy coordinators. Now, this was really very important because we have all, some of us have been up in the theater and people have behaved inappropriately. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really about why you need an intimacy coordinator and how to go about doing that and having conversations about when it's appropriate. There was even like a, a case study that we did about a certain person who was there and, and we were trying to you know, analyze and figure out like how can we support that person in uh, making their voice heard. So that was also really, really wonderful to be a part of. And can I, you talk more about intimacy coordinator and what that is? I, that's a, mm-hmm. I feel like it's a newer thing that's yeah. happening um, because we didn't have so much. As long as I've been to a play that's been at, like, the director was like, listen, you got a kiss right here. Okay, rub right here. Do this. It wasn't a, an intimacy coordinator. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what an intimacy coordinator is. Yeah, an intimacy coordinator is someone who is a director. You know how there's a director for, who has a vision for the show? Mm-hmm. An intimacy coordinator will help you to walk through intimate moments. For example, hand-holding, hugging, kissing, simulating um, sexual intercourse, and... Um, even touching some close or also figuring out what parts of your bodies are you okay with people touching or what parts are you not. And so this is what an intimacy coordinator does. It's not on the director to do that. It's always necessary for you to bring an intimacy coordinator in because they're an outside um, perspective and they have a level of expertise that will really help to create an environment where everyone feels comfortable. And I love it so much that I actually was thinking about becoming certified myself mm-hmm. just because I'm an actor and like Phaedra was saying, like we didn't have no intimacy coordinators. No. People was smooching and judging <laughs> and doing things. Some of us is okay with that though. Ooh! Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So moving on, you went to the intimacy <laughs> class. What else class did you <laughs> Well, See, that's the thing. Okay. With an intimacy coordinator, we can kind of raise some of that in. Because if you're okay with certain things, then you're okay with it. Right. You have, it, it makes the, the rehearsal room feel safe. Absolutely. Right. Because I remember my first kiss, I was, oh gosh, was I in the 
10th grade. Mm -hmm. I had my first on-stage kiss. But I remember my director was amazing. Shout out to Melanie White. Uh, my, my director at the time was amazing, so she closed rehearsal. And it was only me and him, and we were high schoolers, so it was our first kiss. Um, both of us was just as LGBTQ as we want to be, both of us now. <laughs> And high school was very awkward of that, and, and um, it, he was not black, he was a white boy, so that was also a thing. Because yeah. my family was like, who you this is white boy all day, you know, uh -huh. it was a whole thing. Um, but we sat down and she had, she closed, no one could be at the rehearsal, yeah. uh, and we talked slowly through the moment. And and as I became a director, and I don't think I had an intimacy coordinator for, what's that story, I had a fight coordinator, but I didn't have an intimacy coordinator. And it was up to me, and I, I just followed her steps. And I closed the rehearsal and I made sure that they were both comfortable. I had conversations with them separately mm -hmm. um, about what they were comfortable with so that mm -hmm. they could say what they needed to say in the room. And then I didn't cross any boundaries once they got in the room. Like, because yeah. I wanted them to feel safe with me first before they needed to feel safe with each other. Yes. Um, so that they can know I had their back. And they were high schoolers. So that's an awkward moment. But that, I think that's really important to yeah. have. It's a new thing, but yeah, I think it's really important. Um, it's a skill to have for sure. Yeah, and just to let you know that we also talked about that. Intimacy coordinator is not just necessary for professional theater, but we got to get into it for the university level, even high school, because the case study was a college student. And what they were talking about, it was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to shout out the person who led that class, um, who was really passionate about what uh, she had to teach. I mean, there she is right there. Yeah. Amanda. Pulsini? Yes. Pulsini? Um, I'm sorry, Amanda. We love you, though. But, um, yeah, she um, was intimacy, creating a culture of consent. Yes. A Q&A with an intimacy director. It was so, incredible. Awesome. And I personally know somebody a black intimacy coordinator in the Bay Area. Do you? Her name is Janae Simon. Janae Simon. Incredible. She's an actor. Um, she's an incredible talent and she's an intimacy coordinator who I had the privilege of working with, not directly, but she was in the cast. She was brought to a cast that I was in twice mm -hmm. and I was just blown away by her. So Janae Simon, Janae Simon. Awesome. Okay. So the last thing you, uh, yes. you saw, so, or class you had. Um, I only took two classes, but the keynote address was yeah. given by the one and only Nataki Garrett. And why is that important? Because some of you may know or may not know that Nataki Garrett was the former um, artistic director at OSF, Oregon Shakespeare Festival. And she was there from 2019 until just this past May, 2023. And she chose to resign based upon some experiences that she was having there that was... Say it. Fucked up. Well. Well, let's give TBA a hand for having her as a keynote speaker. I'm gonna yes. say that. That's, that's, it was very that's really yeah. important. And I'm going to tell you that keynote address, she didn't roll no bar. She, she rolled through it. She recounted what her experience was like. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things that I, I found out was that, which I didn't know, was that Oregon was um, a state that was specifically geared towards only being for white people. And so they had these certain types of laws that they had put in place. And so there is this attitude there. It's okay for us to perform for you on stage, but you don't want us to like be in charge of anything. Wait, or walk down the street. Place. What are you talking about? Well, so Oregon back in the day was what we would call a sundown town mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And it was also an area or a, a state that was very heavily with the KKK. I yeah, think. okay. Uh, and so and that it's their roots, basically, mm -hmm. the foundation of their, of their state, okay. basically. And so, it's woven in the fabric. Mm -hmm. And so little things show themselves in the community. And I believe Natalie's experience was she received death threats. She received death threats. And just being. Just being, being the artistic director. And that, and not changing things, just right. making things evolve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas evolved evolution is scary mm -hmm. to those who like the way things work. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, wow. Yeah, so, you know. I don't want to really like focus on what happened to her. I want to focus about how she persevered and right, sure. she had a call to action and she basically said that her vision and her goal is to center the artist. That's the purpose of theater for the artist to be centered and for us to be involved and for us to be change makers. So she's currently, um, 
co-artistic director of One Nation, One Project, which is a national artist and arts and init health initiative that is helping cities and towns across the U.S. designed to activate the power of the arts to repair the social fabric of a nation and heal communities. She's also here in the Bay Area, and that is... Like, live here? She lives here now. Oh, nice. Yeah, so she's from here. So basically, like, her... She was born in D.C., and her parents... She was raised here, and she mm -hmm. was raised, you know, her... So is she doing work here? Like, theater Yes. Awesome. And she's also speaking all over the place, so she's booked in Busy Baby. You got to speak with her, didn't you? I did get to speak with her. I actually interviewed her. Well, to see Liz's interview with Ms. Hockey, yeah, go to our Instagram, click like, subscribe on our YouTube, all the good things, so you can see more interview with Liz, chat with Ms. Hockey, yeah. Woo -hoo. Yeah, we're doing things around here. Yeah, I was a fan girl, okay, I was. Okay. So, what have we seen lately? Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Ooh. I'm gonna go. We gonna go. She gonna go, y'all. We are continuous, <laughs> playing at NCTC in yes. San Francisco, directed by our very own oh, Shirley Hey, hey! Woo! Talk about some art, baby. Talk about some art. I literally was in that theater. I, it was me and the cast. I was like talking back. I was like, yes. oh, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. It was a beautiful story. Mm. So, the story, we are continuous. You know what? It's your story. How can you tell what the story is about? Well, I don't think it's, you know, it's me, like, kind of like fluffing. No, we don't toot your horn. Tell us so what the story is about. The story is about a relationship between a mother and her son and how their relationship shifted over the years, him coming out as gay, him coming out as HIV positive, mm. and coming from a, a Midwestern family with very Christian values and the dynamics of that and how the relationship went from them being basically best friends to just being kind of strained and getting back to that. Mm. And so it's a circle of growing, connecting, and he gets married and, the, and how that changes their relationship and the dynamics of that. It's a beautiful piece written by Harrison David Rivers and it was a joy to direct. And it's, it's, it's go to the website. Speaking of circle, it is told, the story is told in the round. And if you've never seen a <laughs> play done in the round, Sean J, you did that. You yes, did he did. That. I never felt like I was outside of the story. I always felt like I was in the middle of what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, I laughed loud. I felt like, and, and it's a three person show, y'all. Three people in the cast. And I was entertained from the top to bottom. Mm. I laughed, and even you know, even there was moments where the white boy even had to say something. I was like, "Yeah!" It's like yeah. there was moments in there, so many moments in there that uh, made you feel black yeah. and understand it. And that's so important when I go to theater. I I want to see myself. I want to feel myself, and I yeah. want to know people in the show that mm -hmm. feel like people that I know or experience yeah. in my life. Um, so I did. I felt that the story was beautiful. The story was by a Bay Area cast, uh, <laughs> yeah. a Bay Area cast. But it was really, really beautiful. Like I said, the stories. Uh, whenever you see a story in the round, it just really feels like you're inside. It, it does feel that way. Um, I think the lighting was amazing. That was beautiful work. Stephanie Johnson. Stephanie Johnson, who's also yes. a black lighting designer in the Bay Area, wow. shout out to her and her energy because she is nobody to play with. Um, she was in the audience, even having a good time as well. Yeah. Um, my wife and I went um, opening night. Liz and I was there. We went oh, from once we left TBA oh, Connect. Right. We literally TBA encouraged everyone as we left their conference that fr was it a Friday night? Sorry. Saturday. Saturday. I'm sorry. Saturday to go see a show, and we yeah. did that. We went and supported Sean J. So we left the conference after rehearsal or whatever we were doing that day. To yeah. go to TBA and then go to see Sean J's um, We Are Continuous at NCTC, which is also... And they had a candy bar. They had a candy bar. It was good. Um, it was good. They had the, um, their mango gummy bears. It was smacking. I ate them for like three days after. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> the show was really, really beautiful. And I just want to congratulate you, friend, on, on beautiful storytelling. Like, it, really, really beautiful. It, it was an And also, like, the lighting designer, mm -hmm. uh, Black American woman. Sound designer, Black American man. Yes. Costume designer, Black American Black American. Yes, man. come on. So it's always my goal to, when telling a Black story, to have Black creatives 
as designers. But also, shout out to NCTC. Yeah. yeah. They do the work and they put their money where their mouth is. Absolutely. Uh, even when supporting black communities uh, and with making sure that they trusted you with the rooted to the tuta, and that's really important. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, great. Go see Get your tickets. tickets. It runs till November 26th. Yes, you got a couple more well, weeks to see it. Go see it. You better run. Uh, Thanksgiving. Go and see you all got to the cast. We did. So, another reason to tune into our Instagram, our interviews, behind the scenes information that we talk to the lighting designer, we talk to the actors um, of opening night. So, go into our Instagram and look at that. Check that out. That's Those things will all be there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what else did we see? Like I said, we was busy, okay? People was busy. Um, but I love that y'all love it on us because we love y'all too. We, yes, we got it. to see Bull Rusher. Yeah. At Berkeley, Re- at Berkeley Repertory Theater, which was a beautiful story about the Bay Area. Yeah, um, I didn't get to see it yet, but I got tickets. You gonna go see I'm gonna go see that. We got to see a beautiful story about the Bay Area. Now, by Issa Davis. By Issa Davis. Which we got to meet Issa Davis. You'll see our uh, pictures on our Instagram. Check that out over there. Um, she was a beautiful spirit meeting yes. her. She's really kind. Um, which is also originally from the Bay Area, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, so they moved to Brooklyn, but yes, she's born, yeah, born and raised here. In the Bay Area. And I believe yeah. her, she's related to Angela Davis. Mm. I can't Somebody remember. Heard, somebody told me that today. Yeah, I can't remember if it's um, either like her a niece or something like that. Or, yeah, yeah, I believe so. But beautiful story about. Um, a mixed race young woman. Is it like the fifties or sixties? I want to say probably the fifties. The fifties during the segregation in yeah. Emmett Till. Um, so it's a mixed race young woman who lives in somewhere in Cal- Northern California. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and she was given a, her mother. The story is that she got was given away. Her mother put her in a basket and put her put like her, Moses. Yeah, put her in a basket and sent her down. But if someone found her and raised her, so she lived in this community, and the community has kind of wrapped their arms around her. Um, A young black woman comes into town, um, and this young mixed woman has never seen a black woman before. Mm -hmm. And she is like blown away at um, at seeing a black woman. There's a black man that lives in town, so she's seen a black man, but she's never seen a black woman before. Mm -hmm. So um, it's about her and that experience and what that looks like, because the black woman is from a segregated place where White folks is white hoping, right? And this, but but the, she it comes to California where it's not the same as the South, and so she's amazed by the way this mixed race woman is moving around in the city mm-hmm. because she can't do that where she's from. Right. So they both kind of learn about where they where each other are from, and it goes through this beautiful journey that I don't want to give away because y'all yeah, like it. You be in my interest. It's still really, no, let me tell you, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say because I'm going to say, say what I'm going to say. say. Okay. What you gonna say? I'm going to say that it's beautiful, and I think that the story is beautiful, and I think that black communities, this is a story that you should see. Yeah. Now, uh-oh, because we are creatively shaded, and we always going to have a little center stage shade, unfortunately, this is not a Bay Area cast. Mm. Um, I think about 100% of the cast is not from the Bay Area. You know, our so- show is about a point of view of the Bay Area artists. Yes. So we're not gonna, we don't backpedal on that. We do wanna see uh, Bay Area artists on the stage and we were able to have an open dialogue mm-hmm. that they were open to and willing to have with us at um, Berkeley Rep, which I respect and give shout out to, please remind me of her name. Belen. Belen yes. at, um, at Berkeley Rep, we respect you, we appreciate your and conversation. And oh, and Lindsay. Um, so we did have a conversation about that. We are very honest and upfront. But again, it's about having, like Sean Jay said, when you're a black person on stage, it really is about seeing a black audience in the cast. So yeah. we do want you to go and support that. With that being said, they did offer an affinity space. Yes, on that we attended. Yeah. Can you tell them more about what an affinity space is? So the affinity space is basically an opportunity to blame. They called it Black Theater Night. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And so it was an opportunity, like we say, for the Black creatives on stage to see representation in the audience. Yeah. And that is key. We want to hold Brooklyn Rep accountable to the fact, yes, they're telling a Black story, which we appreciate. That is a Bay 
Bay Area story. And that is yeah. a Bay Area story. By a Bay Area writer. Right. Right. So we yes. so we can support. And we, we support can. that. And we want you to support that because, again, we, we need to see ourselves in the yes. audience. Yes. And with that, uh, Berkeley Rep was open to a conversation. These are the marketing folks, so they're, they're going to have conversations with their leadership to possibly extend that conversation beyond just them yeah. so that they can see the impact of hiring out of state mm -hmm. actors when there are local actors who can also do that work. Yeah. And so we want to commend them for that for storytelling, commend them for the opportunity to have a conversation. And hopefully, and I said this, it, it's, it's a wonderful story. It's great to see black people on stage, but we also want to see local black folks yeah. on stage. So it's like, we can, it's a both and, as we had a conversation earlier. It's both and, it's like, yes, yeah. great job, and we want you to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we attended the Affinity Space on Friday, Friday which was prior to the show, and it basically is a space where uh, black folks can come together, feel safe, have conversations, enjoy themselves before seeing the show, which was I thought was really cool. They had live a live um, singer, um, they had a DJ. a DJ, they had a movement, somebody who was like a dancer. They had spoken word, all that they had free wine from a black winery. Yes. They had black cupcakes um, from cupcake cupcake be smacking. Oh, Urban Society. Yes. I hadn't heard about them before. Would it make me want to do some more homework on Urban Society? They have put they called Afro Urban, Afro -Urban they, Society. Afro Urban Society cultivated. It's a nonprofit space. organization of cultural creatives dedicated to boosting art, media, and tough but necessary conversations mm. relevant to the African diaspora. I ain't got my glasses on, y'all. It's not just art for us, it's life. Ooh, awesome. That's awesome. So yeah. they sound like somebody we should be connected yeah, with. So awesome. shout out to y'all. The Opulence uh, Vineyards. Okay. Beautiful. And Cupcake. Cupcake and Cupcake and Bake Shop is this it, listen, I buy them on a regular on my own. If you've ever been oh, in the show with me, I yeah, they have a, a, one in Berkeley. No, they have one in Oakland, and, probably in Berkeley, but I also seen one in Concord and I was blown away by that. Um, yeah, but they're a good. black owned cupcake shop mm -hmm. and their cupcakes is smacking. And I don't normally like cupcakes, they're good. They were yeah. those cupcakes aren't too good. If you ever have been in a show with me and I directed, I bring them those because then it's smacking well. Anyway, so shout out to those <laughs> <laughs> yeah. side tracks. Um, shout out to those people and, and to Berkeley Rep for having the conversation and continuing the conversation. We have more to meet with them and talk about. So yes. we're excited about that partnership. Um, what is coming up? Um, there's a tons of things that are happening right now. Cinderella at Berkeley Playhouse is featuring a few local Bay Area actors. And I myself am currently in Maine. Oh, right, girl. At Where you at Maine? Street Moon, I played Vera. That's why I wasn't at Black Affinity Night. Um, that is running until November 19th at 42nd Street Moon. I have a good old time. Sean J. saw it. And, um, oh, at Center Rep, what's that? George McBride. George McBride. McBride. Georgia McBride. It's right in. Mm -hmm. um, Directed by Elizabeth Carter. Yes. yes Elizabeth, Elizabeth Carter. But also, um, Cinderella is directed by Kalia Davis. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So that's a good watch. She's yeah. She's really always been focused on um, kids' art. So I'm really excited yeah. for, to see that and how that turns out. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. good um, so we have to get out and see that, don't we? We do. do. Well, you're in a show. So we got to get out and do it before no, I have, your show starts. Right. And we also have to see group therapy. Yes, that's playing at so, Theater Rhinoceros. Theater Rhinoceros has group therapy running. Oh, wait. There's something else that's happening at Theater Works that we know of two actors who are in. Oh, they announced their actors for the, uh, for, uh, 25 Spell and B. Yeah. Spell and B. Play and Annual Spell and B. A lot of hot words on y'all. Put them. Uh, our friends, our friends. Uh, Anthony Jackson and uh, Dave, Dave Abrams, Abrams will be in Theater Works. Uh, 25th Annual Putnam Spelling Bee. Putnam County? County? Oh, come on. There's a lot of words in that yeah. uh, title. I just know Spelling Bee. That's what I said. <laughs> Spelling Bee. I'm also in rehearsals for Sleeping Beauty, which opens December 1st at the Presidio. Bring your babies out. I'm going to play a big old chicken, y'all. Uh, but come out. It is really for the babies. 
Um, and I also, like, I felt like I wasn't doing black work, but that was really important to me. Yeah. When I first took Secret Beauty, I felt a way like, this is not, this is silly, this is not about the black folks. But I realized it's really about black children seeing black yes. actors on stage. And so when, yes. you do use, when you do use theater, sometimes it may not feel like it's a mm-hmm. black story. But we have a black king, we have a black queen. Right. Um, even our witch is black. And then you got a black chicken. And you're like, oh, this happening. So. But with that being said, right, we don't always have to be, it doesn't have to be a black story scripted that way. Mm-hmm. Just having black people, Latino people, Asian people in it, mm-hmm. you are sh- representing Absolutely. those people and those actors bring their experiences to those to the, Every single time. So they're still telling a portion of their culture yeah. in that role. So it may not be broadcast fully in the script, right? but just you being on stage, yeah. a young little black girl sees you and goes, oh, I can, I can do that. And that's mm-hmm. the key part is it, that for so many years, we were absent yeah. from that experience. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And so it became the norm that, oh, they don't need to be in that show. And little black girls, little black boys, little Asian boys, and little Asian girls, mm-hmm. they don't see themselves. So they think it's limited. And so right. By you being a little chicken, you do your thing. Bop, bop. You're doing your thing. You're doing your thing. Like with many. Yeah. In the time it was written, trust me, there were no black folks in there. They, the, they were the servants. Right. In the, mm-hmm. in that scene. So you being Vera, in that, but someone who sees it will go, oh, okay. And that's really what really what it's about. Yeah, Look, I know the right. term gets used a lot, but representation truly does it matter. It really does. Thank you, yes. Shandé, for that. Thank you for saying that, because you're absolutely right. Which brings me to speak about the New Roots Theater Festival that will be coming up this weekend. Yes. The New Roots Theater Festival is being put on by San Francisco Bay Area Theater Company. There are going to be five shows. And for three days, you can see all five of those shows. These are all BIPOC or LGBTQIA shows. These are shows in development. So they're either stage readings or produ- portions of the productions are being put on. There's lighting, there's sound, there's costumes, there's choreography, there's an afro Brazilian show, there's an Asian American show that talks about jazz. There is um, a show talking about Dying Hall being black, mm. um, Dirty White Teslas. There's so many amazing. Right. What? What? Yes. So look, go, into, go to sfbackcode.org to purchase tickets. Um, it runs November 10th through the 12th. We also partnered with legacy companies, which is my favorite thing, is that other companies that have been staples in the Bay Area, we partnered with them so that they also get this um, exposure to these audiences. So if you're looking for something to see, there's something this weekend for everyone, yeah. for children, for adults, mm-hmm. um, for um, the... Uh, Folks have been incarcerated. There's a story for them. Yes. There's stories all across the board this weekend. And there's 60 Bay Area artists mm. performing. How many? 60. Over 60, to be honest. I think it's about, we got up to 63. Okay. Bay Area artists that will be performing. And if you want to support your community and support the Bay Area and support our BIPOC, well, our black community, this is where you need to be. Also, our BIPOC community, you know, we're not hey, you know, in that situation, but we we're always, yeah. yeah, but this is where you need to be this weekend. Yes, absolutely. And if you haven't noticed, we're speaking from our own individual mics. Yes! Look at well, you. Know, hang on through for us. Where do we got mic from? So, out of the kindness of someone's heart, one of our mics was donated by KSD Casting, run by Kim Donovan, a very kind, wonderful yes. person. KSDcasting.com. Go get your casting needs met. She runs her own company. She casts film. She casts animation. She casts theater. She donated a mic because she believes in what we're doing, and we're so grateful and thankful for that. Thank you, Kim. Absolutely. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. We love you, Kim. We got it, Donovan. Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else we want to see coming up? What we're we going? What we're we working on? I think we, I just looked. I just looked something. Come on, but I can't talk about it. Oh, I hate those um, ones. But it's exciting. I'm working on booking something, so I can't talk about that yes. yet either. But know that we're auditioning. Yes. Um, we're coming to see shows. Oh, that's what we want you to know. If you have a show, um, you are in our black community, you are a director, you are a writer, you are a lighting designer, you're an actor on stage, you are a, a stage manager, inbox us, email us, message us, and let us know where we can come and see your work. 
We want to support you. We want to put the audiences in your seats. Mm -hmm. So let us know. We're coming out, and we love to interview you. Yes. Interview what you, um, people in your cast, so we can know where to send people to, to see amazing, beautiful art. That's so right. Inbox us at Instagram at Creatively Shaded, yep. or email us at Creatively Shaded at gmail.com. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Wait, we have one more thing. Before you do that, so yeah, before you do that, that, so you can also find us on YouTube. So remember on YouTube. To click like, yes, share, and hit that reminder button. Yeah, so you're reminded of our new episode. Episodes. I had to tell my mama. Yeah. She said, "Oh, I gotta catch up." You gotta catch up. She I said, know, I'm always telling my mama, "Like, mom, did you watch that? Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, I had to catch up, mama." And my mama loves to watch it because it's YouTube, so she can put it on her TV. Yes. Yeah. And so catch us, watch us, catch up, stay tuned because we got a lot going on. We do. And we're coming out and seeing a lot of things this season, telling you where to be. There's all oh, another thing. It's not really theater, but um, the AAACC is throwing the season of Black Art every month till February. There's a way that you can see Black Art, whether it's theater art, whether it's um, visual art, um, painting. All versions of art are happening every month for the next four months. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned on the AAACC, the African American Arts Culture Complex in San Francisco. Um, I'm doing a lot of producing, producing work. Ryan Jackson, who's also the artistic director of San Francisco Bay Area Theater Company, is running this program. So we're constantly working. Yeah. But we, we're trying to make sure that our black audiences are getting places that are getting fueled with food and mm -hmm. energy. We got free drinks, free food. Come out and support the season of black art at the AAACC. Yes. And you know, the African American Shakespeare Company had to cancel oh, the yes. run of Death of a Salesman, and you wanted to. Uh... Yeah, so some of you may have heard of the story. It has circulated, I believe, nationwide. There was a local performer, uh, a black man named Richard D. May. So Unfortunately, he passed away. There was a tragic accident that occurred when he was walking in San Francisco on his way to uh, perform for the very first time. He was making his debut. Um, and he passed away. And so he was going to be in Death of a Salesman. He was actually cast, already cast. In, in three of their four upcoming productions. Yes. So mm -hmm. we send our love and light and energy to the African American Shakespeare Company because yeah. losing an actor in, like, in a tragic way is, you have to give your, your cast time to heal. Yeah. And unfortunately, they had to close their show. Um, so we want to send some love and light out to them. Um, pay attention to what else they got coming up this season. They will need the love and help yeah. and support. Um, yeah, thank you. He was a sweet man. He, he was. Yeah. He, yeah, he was in the audition workshop. He was in the audition workshop. That's where we went. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And he said he was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, we, they selected a couple to go to New York. Yeah, and he went to New York with them. Yeah. yeah. Very man. So, and he was... Of him, you wanted to do something? I did. Um, and so I just wanted to say that also, there's a GoFundMe page that was set up by his friend named Jacob Zimmer. It's on Facebook. If you just type in Richard D. May, you will find it to help cover his expen uh, funeral experience expenses. And we should be able to include that link. In yes, our, in our yeah, well, um, shirts. It will be know. here in, in this video. I just wanted to read a poem because it, it disturbed. I was I had a lot of feelings about it, mm -hmm. but I do want to acknowledge the fact that we have lost an incredible person in our community who was really finally um, being able to live his dream. So I wanted to read a poem, just a few lines from Nikki Giovanni's All Times Like This, excuse me, At Times Like This. I'm reading Nikki Giovanni's At Times Like This. At times like this, we measure our words because we are measuring a life. We recognize a good life was led. A generous heart ceases to beat. A hearty laugh will no longer be heard. We measure not the depth, but the width of compassion and passion and dreams. At times like this, we are sad. We gather, we comfort each other. Yet still, at times like this, we properly cry. I just want to uplift the name of Richard D. May, African American Shakes Company, the entire San Francisco Bay Area community. We have lost a member of our community, but most importantly, we have lost a life. Rest in power, my brother. Soar. And that concludes our episode for today. So, you all know the rules. 
like, subscribe, share, do all the things, but stay black. <laughs> Extra black. And go follow us and remember to be fierce and fabulous. Fierce, fabulous, black. At Creatively Shaded. That's our handle. At Creatively Shaded. Bye, y'all. Bye.